תא הקדוש ברוך הוא כתוב, מסכת חגיגה, דף ט"ו עמוד א', 15A1. We were just speaking yesterday about, we had the question that they asked Ben Zoma, what happens when you have a betula that she became pregnant, right? Does, is she permitted to get married to a Kohen Gadol? So if you remember, we already spoke about this entire concept. How could it be? So he says, do we suspect to Shemuel or not? Da'amar Shemuel, because says Shemuel, Yachol ani livol kama be'ilot belodam. A person, he could come, he could have a few relations with a betula without actually taking out her virginity. Right, was this basically he goes through the side. So the Gemara says, do we suspect that a person could also do the same thing? And therefore, right, what happens is she still has betulim and she still move bedet, okay? And then he says, oh, Dilma, or maybe, right? Or maybe, because at, at the end of the day, since she had the relation, she's already a surah to the Kohen Gadol. Oh, Dilma, maybe, the Shmua lo shichicha, it's not common. So Amal Lehu, he went and he told them, the Shmua lo shichicha, it's shiach, it's not common. For a person to come and to do all these, uh, you know, to have relations in such a way that he's not going to get rid of the betulim and she's going to still become pregnant. However, though, we are going to suspect that maybe the, she became pregnant through the ambati. Okay? So therefore, so he says, the Amar Shmuel, he says, one second. But Shmuel says, how could you tell me now that we're talking about now that a woman could become pregnant in a bathtub? He says, any shikhvat zera that does not shoot out like an arrow is not mazra'at. It cannot conceive a woman, which means that in order for the shikhvat zera to have the potent, to have the power to form a child, it has to be yore It has to be like an arrow. Right? Right? So it says the Gemara, mi kara nami yore No, 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 no. At the beginning, it did shoot out like an arrow. Once that seed shoots out like an arrow, so then it has the power to conceive. Later on, the way that you're going to put it in your body doesn't matter. Meaning that the, the, the semen already has its power. Once it's your rekechetz, it has a power. Now, how do you put it in the, in the woman's body? It's a different question. Where is this nogia? Like we mentioned yesterday, IVF, right? IVF, all these things, why? Because as long, IVF is basically the intravenous. So basically what happens is that the second that a husband, he comes and he takes the seed, Right? And they come and they inject it into yeah. the woman in order to, it's infertility, in yeah, order that, yeah. that she could become pregnant. So now as long as the, the, the semen yeah. came out, it has the power to conceive, and therefore the woman could become pregnant as long as it came out. Okay? No. no zav. Zav it's zav or other things like that. If it's not coming out, like it. Right? And therefore, if you remember yesterday, that's why I told you yesterday that we had the case of Yirmiyahu and Avi, right? That he had a child and a, and a grandchild, yeah, right? And it was Ben Sira. So Ben Sira was his son and his mm -hmm. grandson, mm -hmm. right? And then we went and we said that in the Shulchan Ruch over there, in, in Siman Aleph, it speaks about is a person going to be um, by doing that nowadays, okay? So this is also nowadays, that's what it says here in the footnote. If you look in footnote number five, right? It says, for example, okay? Okay? Azra melachutit. Fine. Says the Gemara. Tanu Rabbanam. We learned in a brayta. Okay? Maaseb Rabbi Yoshua ben Chananya sheyaomed al gav maala behar abayit. So there was a story with Rabbi Yoshua ben Chananya that he was on top of one of the stairs in Har Abayit. Verab Verau ben Zoma. So ben Zoma he saw him. Velo amam min pin lefanav and he didn't stand up in front of him. Okay? So now when Rabbi Yoshua right realized that it was the yisech adat of ben Zoma, Amar lo he told him meayin. He says, where are you coming from? And where, where, where are you? Like, where are you? Yeah, sometimes you do that. No, I, I say usually, are you with me? Right? That's the hint, right? That basically, are you with me? Right? So, where are you? Why? He's not asking physically. He knows physically where the guy is. Obviously, the guy's, you know, standing in front of him. Right? Exactly. He's talking about mentally. Where's your mind? Where are you? So he comes and he says, Amarlo, he says, So I was actually thinking about Maaseh Bereshit between the space between the Maim Al-Yonim and Maim Atachtonim, okay? There's only three fingers, right? Think about it. You know what that means? Three fingers between the Maim Al-Yonim and the Maim, that means the Makom of the Chibur, of the Maim Al-Yonim, the upper waters and the firmaments and the lower waters, three fingers. That's the distance. says in the is showing that it's actually going to be that it's going to be um, how do you call it? It's like a it's um, 
it's minachefet. It's like coming down, and it's a how do you call it? It's a, um, so you say it's like that it's floating, right? That's the yachas kiyona shemenachefet al banei avena nogat. It's like a yona that is floating. Okay, here I wouldn't call it floating, but here it's floating. It's like flying yeah. over its children, but it's not actually touching it, right? That means it's not actually, there's no physical contact. It, it's right above it, hovering. I think the word is, no? It's like hovering. I think that's what they say in English. Plane. Okay, it's like it's hovering right on top of it, but it's not actually physically touching. So says Right? That means he's still on the outside, which means he does not understand 100% why? When was Ruach Elohim Right? But however, though, the Havdala, the different, the, 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 the distinction between, right, the Maim and Yonim, Maim and was only Biyom HaShenid Davai, was only in the second day. So therefore, right, Ben Zoma was understanding that this was going on the first day, right? It's not true. It was actually on the, the second, second day. day. So he says, Vekama. So what they meant is the distance between the Maim Yonim and Maim Atachtonim. Amar Ravecha Bar Yaakov says Ravach Bar Yaakov, Nima. So there's a big difference between Ben Zoma, right, and what Ravach Bar Yaakov says. Kimlo Nima is like a chuta sa'ara. You know what that means? Mamash, a hair breadth. Three fingers, it's uh, three fingers. It's a big amount. Okay, but Rabbanan Amri and Rabbanan say, Kiguda de Gamla. It's like the space between two um, knots of a geshen, of a... How do you call it? Of um, of a logs. logs. No, but I'm saying the the the, the logs of the of a bridge, okay. right? The gesh is a bridge. Okay, it's exactly right. So that means we're talking about the knot of a bridge, right? That we're talking when we're, when they're building a bridge and they're going to put the different pieces of wood over there in the bridge, right? It's very very small. Or zutra vitem ervasi amad. Or zutra and some people say ervasi says kitre glima de prisa adade. It's like the revach. It's like the space. Right, which is between two talitot, which one is on top of the other one, which is mamash, so thin, right? There's one, the Amnila, and some people say, Kitre kase dischife adadi. It's like the revach between two kosot, which are all right on the opposite of each other, right? They're, they're on the other sides, which are one on top of each other. Okay, fine. Now we're going to go into Acher, Elisha ben Avuya. Okay, and now we're going to talk about this. Okay, and it says like this Acher. Kitzetz benetiot. Acher was mekotzetz benetiot. Remember, mekotzetz benetiot is a, is an expression that he's being mekalkel, right? He's actually like making worse or he's destroying, right? Something the good, pardes. right? So this was in the pardes. So there it was like since it was already done with the pardes, which is like an orchard, which is like a you know like a nice vineyard. So what happens is is that they're coming and they're in this orchard. He's like uh, cutting down the trees. That's like the literal translation. Kitzetz benetiot. So he comes and he says like this. Alava katu omen on him. It's the pasuk says. Do not place your mouth to make your flesh sin. Okay, and then it says over here, What are we referring to exactly? Right, so basically what happened was is that Acher saw Mem Tet. Okay, you know who Mem Tet is? Yeah, the Malach. So here it actually, yeah, actually yeah, says the Malach. It actually says the name. Malach. No, it's written the actual name, but we call it Memtet. That's what's brought down, whether it's in, whether it's in, uh, in the, uh, what's it called? Uh, which is in the, one second. He's the Sofer of Akadosh Baruch one minute, right? So what happens is... Yeah. Yeah. It's brought down. I mean, you don't say the me, right? You just say Memtet. Okay, the Malach Memtet. So it says over here like this. It was given for him the zechut to come and to start writing the zechuyot of Israel. Amar, so he comes and he says, right? Gemira, right? Now he comes and he says, one second. We already have a Kabbalah. Telemala lo ava lo yeshiva, right? Velo tacharut, right? Above in the Shemaim, there's no yeshiva, which means the Malachim, they don't come and they don't uh, sit. It's only a Kosh Baruch right? Nobody else. Velo tacharut. There's no competition between them. They look oref, right? And there's no, um, yeah. they only have a face. They don't have a knee. They don't have the back part. Yipui, there's no ayifut, right? Shema chas v'shalom, shte reshuyot. What? Chas v'shalom, there's two different reshuyot. What's going on over here? Right? How, how could it be? There's something, there's something that's uh, wrong over here. You understand? See? What? So he said, 
right after Acher said his words, they took Memtet out, and they hit Memtet with 60 lashes of fire. Remember that we already explained that Bedin Shilmata, how many lashes do you give? Shoshivatesha. Bedin Shilmala, how many lashes do you always give? 60. Why 60? Bedin Shilmata, when do you start punishing in this world? At what age? What age? This world. This world. Olama Zeh. 13. Right? When a person's bar mitzvah, he's mechalel Shabbat, you kill him. You don't wait until 20. Bedin Shilmala is 20. So therefore, the three times, the Betim Shalmata, three times 13 is 39. Three times 20, 60. So that's what that's the difference in the lashes. The lashes down here, you understand or not? No, One more time. Get three, time the three times three times 13, uh, okay. 39. Three times 20, 60. Betim Shalmala, that they punish at the age of 20, lashes are 60. Betim Shalmata, that they punish at 13, lashes are 39. Uh, uh, he he no, because at the end of the day, it was like as if that he caused the mistake to be done, yeah. right? And at the end of the day, it wasn't, uh, you understand? Okay. By the way, what I told you is brought down there in the Chidushim and then Yaakov, if you look in the footnote 20. Right, you have it there, the Chidushim of the Yaakov. Okay, so this is now, says the Gimara, they came and they gave him lashes 60 times. Now remember, this is also brought down in the Gnan Gitin to do with the sun was getting lashes. 60 times early on. All these things, it was always 60. It's always, whenever it's Bedin Shalmala, it's 60. So, might, so they went and they told Memtet. Malachim, the Malachim. Malachim come and they are the Shlichim of Akash Baruch So they gave the other Malach 60 lashes. So he comes and he says, Ki chazite lo kame. So one second. Why is it, right, that he didn't actually, when he saw him, why didn't he send up? Right? Because if he would have realized that, Right, he wouldn't have re- he wouldn't have made the mistake that Bemed was to the shiyot. So it So it was then given. Right, that means after he saw this makot, he still did not retract. Meaning the malach just received lashes because he should have stood up. If he would have stood up, Acher wouldn't have made the mistake. But still, even after seeing these lashes, Acher still went off the path. So the fact that he went off the path now. He has the permission to erase the merits of Acher. So what happened? Memtet, yes, Memtet has the, again, he's the one that's writing all the, all the, the Zechuyot. So now he has the, the, he has the right to erase, to abolish all the merits of, of Acher. He has Sabbat Kol, Ramla. Sabbat Kol came from the Shemaim and said, Shuvu Banim Shovavim Chutz Meacher. Everybody could retract. Everybody could do Teshuvah, except for Acher, right? Why? Because it was such a bad sin. It was such a powerful sin that, you know, it, it, it was impossible for him to do Teshuvah. So now he says, now the truth is, even that was a test because it was purposely said that way. But really, Bemet, he could have done Teshuvah as well, right? As we all know. So now he comes and he says, no, yes, a heavenly voice. It's a voice from the Malachim or whatever it is that comes out that this is what's going on. No, 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 but it was a test. It was a test. It was a test. So what happened? Um, yes, he could have done Teshuvah. He could have still done Teshuvah. It was a test. So it says it now, Amar, Oil Gavra Alma. So now he comes and he says, since he was already thrown out of Ulama Ba, basically, he lost all of his opportunities. Okay, so listen, if he can't get Ulam Abba, at least he should enjoy Ulam Azeh. So let him, let him enjoy in this world, right? So that's why That's why he went out and he stopped keeping the mitzvot of the Torah, right? Because of this. Now, again, obviously we know, right, that it was uh, not 100% correct, right? That's what it says over here, right? He thought, it says in the, in the footnote, if you look, whether it's the Shlach Kadosh, he says over there, Barur Shachir himself, he thought that he was Manuah Melechro B'Tshuva Le'olam. However, though Arbe Minam Mepharshim say that the Sharet Teshuva was never closed. It's brought down Devarim Rabbah. Right? Shalei Pakem So he says, Vehem Kovim. So they say that for sure, Akos who would have accepted his Teshuva with all his heart. But Zeyna Dvar HaOmel Lifna Teshuva. But the Batkol was only just saying that Akos Baruch would not help Akher to do Teshuva. Meaning usually, Akos Baruch Hu helps people to do Teshuva. Here, if Akher would have been done Teshuva, he would have done the Teshuva. And it would have been accepted. But here Hashem is not going to help him. 
Because usually when a Kedosh Baruch Hu is right, he helps a person. Right, they help him to do Teshuvah. Here he wasn't going to be helped. So what happened? He went and he went out. What happened? So he went out and he found the Zona. And he wanted to have relations. Right? The Zona is now astonished. She comes and she tells him, You're the big rabbi here, Eli Shabbat Nebuyat. What are you doing? Yeah? Akar pugla memishra b'shabat b'yahavla. He went and he took out a tzno, a radish, from a furrow on Shabbat, from like one of you know these uh, rows, right on Shabbat, which is chayav sekila, you know, mechalel Shabbat, and he gave it to her. Ambona, she said, "Acher hu." This somebody else. This is not Eli Shabbat Nebuyat. This somebody else, and that's how he got the nickname of Acher. Yeah, it's somebody else. This is not Eli Shabbat Nebuyat. Acher hu. Somebody else Mishim because of the Chilul Shabbat. Shabbat. Yeah, exactly. She was the one that gave him right the name. Okay, so therefore, he comes and he says, right as follows. Sha'ala acheret Rabbi Meir. So now the acheret comes and he asks Rabbi Meir. Le'achar she yatzal etarbut ra'ah after he went off the path. Now remember that Elisha ben Avuya was the rabbi of Rabbi Meir. Rabbi Meir Balanes was a student of Elisha ben Avuya. Okay. So he comes and he asks him, Amale, and he told him, what does it mean in the Pasuk? Gam et ze leumat ze asa ha'elokim. There's a very famous Pasuk, we use this all the time, that HaKadosh Baruch Hu always makes the powers, whether between good and bad, right, which is basically righteousness and, 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 uh, and evil, he always makes them equal, par, on the same level, right? That's what they learn from this Pasuk. So he comes and he tells, Amale, he comes and he says, kol ma she'akadosh Baruch Hu bara kenegdo, right? Anything what HaKadosh Baruch Hu created, Bara is something else kenegdo, right? What does that mean? Bara harim, bara gevold, right? What happened? He made mountains. And what's the opposite of a mountain? A valley. A valley is the lower down, right? So he made the mountain, which is above. He made the valley, which is the lower down. Bara yamin. He made very big, right? Oceans, oceans. we're going to call them. Bara neharot. So he came and he made rivers. Amarlo, he comes and he says, now Acher comes and he tells Rabbi Meir, Rabbi Akiva Rabbi Chalo Omar Ka. So one second, Rabbi Akiva, your rabbi, didn't see that. Now remember, Rabbi Meir, he did Shimush also by Rabbi Akiva, because one of the five students of Rabbi Akiva was Rabbi Meir Balanes. Remember, Rabbi Meir Balanes was Stam Mishnah. That's why we said that all the Gemara, the Stam Mishnah, Stam Tosefta, some, everything we were writing, the Sikri, was all like Rabbi Akiva, because all of them were his students. So he comes and tells him now, hey, one second, but Rabbi Akiva, your rabbi, doesn't say that. Ela barade, barat tzadikim, barat reshaim. Right? He comes and he says, he created tzadikim, and he created reshaim. Paragan Eden, Paragainam, right? He created Gan Eden and he created Gainam, right? Who prepared for every single human being two different portions, one in Gan Eden and one in Gainam. Zachat Sadiq Natal Khelko Bechel Khabro Began Eden. Shh, it Khayev, right? Rasha, Natal Khelko Bechel Khabro Beginam. One more time. Says the Gemara, so what happened? So basically, Rabbi Akiva now, right? Rabbi Akiva explained the Pasuk differently. Did you realize that Bimi Balanes purposely did not take it anywhere religiously, meaning spiritually? He took it mundane, right? He took this Pasuk, and when Ache now comes and asks him the question, he comes and he says, no, there's physical. There's a mountain, there's a valley, there's a this, there's a that. He doesn't know what's there. Rabbi Akiva didn't learn only that. Rabbi Akiva learned that everything's spiritual. Sadiq Rasha. Right, Gan Eden Gainam. He says Zelumadze, but Elokim. Right, but I think purposely Rabbi Meir Belanes did that, and obviously Acher was trying to. Because again, ever since then, Acher was coming and trying to always go against everything. So now he comes and he says this: Amar of Meshashia says to Meshashia, Mikra, what is the pasuk? How do we know this? He says the Gabetz of the King Ketiv Lachem Be'Atzam Mishne Yirashu. It says that therefore in their land, right, it's like a manat kula that they're going to inherit. But the Rishayim it's written. Right, right, which means there's also marakikula. So you see from here, that's how he learned it from the pasuk, right? That there's going to be two different things. Well, basically, the concept is that when a person comes and he does an action, that action will actually have an effect even on everybody else. So when a tzaddik comes and he does an action, it has an effect on everybody else. When a rasha comes and he does an action, it has an effect on somebody else. That's why people think, ah, what's the big deal? I'm going to do an avera. He says, no, because of your avera, you cause other people to also do the avera. You are the one that's causing other people also to do other things. And therefore, it's very important to have that in mind because it does. Some people think, oh, big deal. I'm going to be, uh, I'm doing something in a private room. What's a, no, 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 no. 
what you just did right now, you have an effect on everything which is going on around you, right? It's going to have an effect. So says the Gemara, another story between Acher and Rabbi Meir. Another question that asked after he went off the path. My what does it mean in the Pasuk? It says in Yob, what does that mean that the Chokma people do not understand the value of it? Right? And it's not going to be, they're not going to understand the value of whether it's going to be of Zahav, Zahukit, right? And it's not going to be like any Klipas. Right. I remember Paz is also Zahav, it's one of the names of Zahav. So Amarlo, he comes and he tells him, Says you know, these are divrei Torah. Divrei Torah, they are so difficult to purchase them. They're so difficult to learn them, just like it is for gold and golden utensils. Mamash, like ikli zahav, ikli paz. Mamash, it's difficult. When a person wants to learn, it doesn't come easy. You have to break your head over it. But to get rid of it, meaning to lose it, it's so easy. It's like glass. What happens? The glass falls, boom, kaddish. There's nothing what to do. Uh, silver or the gold or whatever, you still have something, you know, there's still something that you can do. Here, there's nothing what to do. Okay? So he comes and he says, Amalo, he says, Rabbi Kiva, your rabbi, he didn't say that. He says, why? He says, he says, just like a, if it breaks, you have a takana. Right? Zahav, you could melt it, you could form it back together. Even zechukhit also, right? You could come, right? And you could fix it again. He says, even though a tamich hacham, he could come and he could say, he says, Amarlo, he comes and he tells him, one sec, one sec. If this is now how Rabbi Akiva is explaining it, and you agree with it, so that means you could also do teshuva, because you just said that a tamich hacham shesarach, he could still do teshuva. Amarlo, he comes and he said, he said, I already heard from behind the mechitza, right, that you could, everyone could return except for Acher, which means I have no takana. Meaning every time he comes to Sarach, yeah, he's got a takana. Acher does not have a takana. That's what he told. So Tanu Rabbanan, another story with Acher Rabbi Meim. Maaseh right be Acher, she yadu chev al-asus be Shabbat. It was a story of Acher that he was riding on a, on a, on a horse on Shabbat. Vaya Rabbi Meim me'alech achara v'imot Torah mipiv. Now Rabbi Meim was walking behind him to learn Torah. So think about it. Mm-hmm. Acher is coming and he's being Michalel Shabbat. He's on the, on, on the horse on Shabbat. But Rabbi Meir is behind him trying to learn Torah. Amarlo, he comes and he says, Meir, chazor le'achorecha. Go back. Shekvar shi'arti bikve sus ad kan tchum Shabbat. Because I already realized that we already got to the tchum of Shabbat. That means imagine what it is. Rabbi Meir didn't even realize, right? didn't even realize that he already got to the tchum of Shabbat. But Acher understood that according to the steps of the, of the horse, he's already Tchum Shabbat. So he tells him, go back. You can't walk anymore. He's continuing. He's already, he's on the horse on Shabbat. He's continuing. He tells him, go back. Amarlo, he says, why don't you also retract? Amarlo, he says, he says, what? You, you, I already told you. I told you the answer. I heard it from Acher Pargol. I heard it behind the curtains. That's it. Chutz Acher. He grabbed him and he took him into the Betul Midrash, right? Amale, he comes and he says, Lienuka, so psuka. So comes Acher and he tells to the child, give me the Pasuk that you're learning. Remember, in the olden days, one of the biggest sigulot was, you tell a child, what are you learning? Right? And that was a siman that Hashem is speaking to. Because why is Dafka that child? That, by the way, even nowadays happened. I still remember until today, one of my friends, they went to a rabbi, right? And they told him, listen, I need a story for a Dvar Torah. Usually you need a story for a Dvar Torah, right? Especially if you're a storyteller, right? Other times you just come and, you know, you just give it to them and that's it, the, the Yisod. But if not, right, you need a story. So they went and he said, go to this rabbi. His name was Rabbi Applebaum. It's in the Toronto. So the boy comes and he goes to Rabbi Applebaum. By the way, I'm looking for a story on this week's parasha, right? Uh, this rabbi sent me to you to give me the story. He looks at the boy and he tells him, who are you? He tells him the name, whatever. What? He goes, you must be a special boy. He says, why? He says, I just remembered a story and I don't know why I remembered it. Yeah, story, some random. You asked me exactly for this story. I'm going to give you exactly that story. And that's why I heard from my Rabbanim that whenever in the middle of a dirasha, all of a sudden it comes to your mind, this is the name of Rukhaim Shulevitz, I think it was. Anytime in the middle of a dirasha, all of a sudden a story comes to your mind, say it over. Even if it's not connected to anything. Why? Because if all of a sudden in the middle of the Rasha, a story comes to your mind, 
HaKadosh Baruch Hu put in your mind for you to say it. It's not connected. Hashem put in your mind. Say it over. Why? Because if not, my Keshe, you don't know what the you're speaking about something else. All of a sudden, boom, boom, something went in here. Say it over. That's where it is. That's where it goes. So here he comes to the child, right? Pesokli Psuka. He comes and he says, right? Look, look at the Pasuk. Amalu, he says, En Shalom, Amar Hashem le Reshaim. That was the Pasuk that he said. There's no Shalom, because what who says to the Reshaim. So, he goes to another better Knesset. Amal he comes and he says, he thought maybe this better Knesset, you know, maybe they don't like him. <laughs> so they're going to go to another better Knesset. What happens? The same thing. So, Pesukaka. Amalu, he says, Ki im techabsi banete vertabilach borit. He says, even if they're going to come and they're going to wash, right, the sins, or here we're talking about the, we're talking about the, with the, with the, with the soap, right, the tabilach borit, also soap, still you have the lichluchim, the dirt of your sins are still in front of me. So imagine, this is already a second time. You went to a third bit of Knesset now. Right, remember, you go to one bit of Knesset, you don't like it, you go to the second one, you go to the second one, you don't like it, you, may, you open up a third. Right, what happens? Amale comes and he says, right, to the third bit of Knesset, the Tlavu Bet, 15b. Tell me the Pasuk. Amale, he tells him, Yemiya, the At Shedud, when it's going to come, the Shod Vashever, the breaking, Mata, see, what are we going to do? Kitil Beshishani, even if you're going to put on clothing of like silk, right? Kitadi Adizahav, you're going to put on golden clothing. When you're going to come, you're going to put on your eyes these colors. It doesn't help. Meaning that no matter how you're going to try to beautify yourself, right? It's going to look terrible. So basically, he understood that the yofi of the Torah that was in him, that he knew so much, it wasn't going to help him to find favor in the eyes of Akash Baruch Hu, and it wasn't going to help him. He went to a fourth bet of Knesset, right? He doesn't let go. Fourth one. Look how many times Zerbimir is put, taking him bet of Knesset. Like we're in Knesset. Morocco, no? So huh? we've seen it. Yeah, one right right beside each other, right? Yeah. He took him to 13 synagogues. 13. All the psukim were all in the same order. We're all in the same concept. The same concept. Every single one was telling him the same idea. Lebatra to the last child, Amale he told him, Sokli Psukecha, tell me the Pasuk. Amale he told them, Rasha Amar Elohim Malechal Saper Chukai, which means you don't have Reshut even to learn Torah because you are Rasha. Now, how Yenuka, that child was Megam Gembelishne, was a mother, he stuttered, right? He mumbled, he stuttered, this child. So he, he didn't hear that he said, Rasha Amar Elohim Malechal Saper Chukai. He heard, he said, Elisha. He says, Larasha, Elisha. As he mumbled. So he says, Elisha, Amalekul Chazwe. And some people say, Sakina Hava Badeva Kare. So some people come he said, he had a knife on him. And he killed, he cut him up. He killed the child. Yeah? So he sent the child to the 13 synagogues. He cut him up. He killed the child and he sent him to the 13 synagogues. He cut him Other people say, no, Amar. He said, no, he didn't actually do it. Figure he it. said, if I had a knife, have a I would, how many times do you hear? Yeah, what does that mean? That means that he would have done it. Not that Behmet, he actually did such a thing. But he would have done such a thing. Okay, but really Behmet, he didn't do it. So so now, again, remember, this is just to show you how much Rabbi Mead was trying to bring him back to the Teshuvah. Now, if you realize all these things, exactly. Now, if you realize all these things, was all part of the test because just like the Shuvarim Shuvavim Chutzneacher was part of the test, so too this was all part of the test to see if he was going to do it or not. Because at the end of the day, if he would have done the Teshuvah, it would have been accepted, as we already said. So he what? That's that's the proof. That's the proof that that's part of the test. That even after because of what happened over there, he said the Shteir Shiot and everything. That's the Gemara. When the passed, was going to pass away, Amri, they said, right, we're not going to judge him on these things. Right? We can't bring him to Olam Abbas. So he said, okay, listen. They don't want to judge him on his actions, but they don't want to, they can't bring him to Olam Abbas. So we don't want to judge him because at the end of the day, he was a Sakba Torah all his man. So therefore, the Torah protects from the fire of Geinam. But we also don't want to come and we don't want to Bring him to Ulam because he sinned. So if he sinned, he can't get it. So what are we going to do? 
So Amar Abimi, he says Abimi, Mutav de la daini vilaita le la madate, right? So he says it's better that they should judge him to gain up, there, get rid of his sins, so that way he could be zoche to Olam Abba because of the zechut of his Torah. So he says, Mataya mut ve'ele Hashem mikivro. He says when he dies, and then he's going to go to the Bedin Shalmala, and all, he's going to make sure that there's going to be Ashan coming out from the kever of Elisha ben Avuya, Ramachet. So kinach nafshed the Rabbi Meir, when Rabbi Meir passed away, sali kutra mikivre de acher, there was Ashan coming out of the, of the kever of, of acher. Amar Rabbi Yochanan says Rabbi Yochanan, kevurta lemikla rabbe. Is there gvura that a person is coming and he's burning his rabbi? Meaning, Rabbi Meir comes and he's burning his own rabbi because at the end of the day, he's getting him to get burnt in Gainam. So Chad have a benana, right? There was a Talmud, right? That he actually went off the path of the Torah. Velo matzinan letzule. Right? What? Can we actually, you know, help him? Right? At the end of the day, Acher was at the beginning between the Chachamim. So therefore, since he was one of us, right? We should help him. Inakte bayad. If I'm going to take him with his hand, I could take him out of Gainam and bring him into Olam Abba. So man mar me'an. So who could come and take him? Right? So the Aman, he says, Matayu Mao Amut, Bahabe Ashami Kiro. So when he's gonna die, so when Rabbi Yochanan is gonna die, he wants to put out the Ashan, right? From the Kever of Acher. So Kinachan said Rabbi Yochanan, Pasat Utrami Kiv de Ches. Once Rabbi Yochanan passed away, it stopped the fire of on top of the Kever of Acher. Patachaleu Savdana, and therefore the Safdan went and he said in Rabbi Yochanan, Afilu Shomera Petach Shav Gainam no Mali Tnera Ben. He says, even the, the Shomer Petach of Gainam was not able to stop you. That is, he was able to go into Gainam and take Acher out, and not even the Shomer Petach, not even the guard there could stop Rabbi Yochanan. Because Rabbi Yochanan was so powerful, he went in and took him out. You understand? But there's a whole question here, obviously, we have to understand. <laughs> what was the, the Tikkun? There's a Mikhtab Eliyahu. No, no, no. So that's why the Mikhtab Eliyahu in Chelek Dalid, page 193 to 201, he explains there how, what exactly was the Tikkun of Rabbi Meir. And Rabbi Yochanan. Obviously, so Acher had to have a tikkun. Each other. So they need each other. First they came the tikkun of Rabbi Meir, and then it was, then was the tikkun of Rabbi Yochanan. Okay? Now, it says like this. Bito shel Acher, atya lekameh de Rabbi. So now the daughter of Acher came in front of Rabbi. Rabbi Yudana see. Amrala, and she told him, Rabbi, panaseni, give me panasa. Amrala, he told her, bat miyat, who are you? You know, who are you? The daughter of who? So Amrala, she told him, bito shel Acher. Right, that she is the daughter of Acher. Again, here in the bottom, it says, it could be that she actually did not say Acher. She said Elisha ben Abuya, and mm-hmm. the Gemara was the one that changed it, right, to Acher. Or maybe it could be that she did the, you know, she she said Acher because she was actually Kshera, and she's saying her father became Acher. You understand? But whichever way it is, two different explanations. So Amalla, he told her, Adain yesh mi zero ba'ola. This is what? He still has descendants in this world? Vakti mm-hmm. it's written, lo nin velo lo, velo nechet be'amo ben tzalim guraf. That there's nothing. Right, that means there's nothing going to be nothing that you know. The, how could it be that there's not going to be a remembrance to him? Amralo, she went and she said, right, zechol le torato v'al tiskor maasav. Just remember the zechut of his Torah. Don't remember his actions. Miyar immediately yarda esh v'sichachas of salosh rebi. Right, immediately a fire came down and it started burning. Right, as if to say the sarsal of rebi, which means that the, this is the esh dat of the Torah. So the Torah came down and started, uh, so he realized. So Bachav Amar Rebbe says, Rebbe started crying. And he started saying, Umala mitganim bakach. Right? If right now you see that the Torah, Acher, he separated from the Torah. But still the zechut of the Torah that he learned was so strong that a miracle came down. And it was burning my chair because I went and I said such a thing. So imagine the people that are coming and they're still learning the Torah and they're still doing the Torah. Imagine how much strength does the Torah actually have. But Rabbi Meir, so says the Gimana, one second, one second. Okay, until the hours, everything's beautiful. But Rabbi Meir, how is Rabbi Meir learning Torah from Acher? Says Rabbi Yochanan, name Rabbi Yochanan. Right, and we already learned this already. Right, what does this mean? Kisifte Kohen Yishmirudat. So he says over here, what does it mean in the Pasuk? This we learned in the Mohit Katash. If you remember, Yudzayin Mudalim. So he said over there, Kisifte Kohen Yishmenu David, Torah Yivakshum Yukim Malach Hashem Zavavodu. Im Domea Rav Lemalach Hashem Zavavod, Yivakshu Torah Mitiyu, Vim Lo, Vim Lav, Yivakshu Torah Mitiyu, meaning, when are you supposed to learn? You're supposed to learn from a person only if 
he's like a Malach Hashem Tzavakot. That's the explanation when it says, Kisitek Kohen Yishmin Udav, Torah Yivachun you're going to ask him because he's like, so if the rabbi is Gomel Malach Hashem Tzavakot, Yivachu Torah Mipiu, ask for Torah from him. But if not, Al Yivachu Torah Mipiu. So therefore, the fact that Acher went off the path, how is there Bimini coming and trying to learn Torah from Acher? You can't do that. So Amar Shaki says, Amar Shaki, Shab Bimini, Karash, Kach, Vodarash. Rabbi Min, he found a pasuk and he was Doresh a pasuk. It says in the pasuk, Turn your ear to listen to the Chachamim. It says, and your heart should turn towards me. It doesn't say to the word them. Ledatam. It says, ledati, to, know, to know me. So therefore he went and he said, the pasuk is telling you to listen to the words of the Torah, but don't turn your heart towards them, but rather towards me. So therefore he comes and he says that he was supposed to learn Torah from him, turning his ear towards him, but not his heart. So Rochanin Amar Meachar, Rochanin says, no, there was another Mekom. The Pasuk says in Tilim, Shimi bat ur'i v'ati oznech. Right, listen, my daughter, and you're going to see and turn your ear. Veshichi amechu v'tavich. Right, which means, right, but don't, but forget his uh, actions and do not learn from them. So Kashu Kraya Dadi, so once again, he says, it's a Siran the Pasuk, because the Pasuk is coming and tell you, you should not listen, you should not learn from a person unless he's Domele Malach Hashem Zavapot. And the other Pasuk is saying, learn from a guy, even though he's terrible in, in you know, everything else. But just learn because he's got a lot of wisdom. So Sadiq Mana Alaka she asked a question. Habegadol, right? Habekatan. The Psukim, the last ones which are telling you to learn Torah, that's even from an Rasha, we're talking about a Tamil Chacham Gadol, and he knows how to watch himself from evil actions. The other one is not such a Tamil Chacham, he's a Tamil Katan, and therefore he's not, which means that a person has to be very, very, very strong, right? And very powerful in order not to learn from their actions. Because if not, they will be badly influenced that once they're influenced, gamarni. Okay, that they had it. So when Ravdimi, when Ravdimi came from Eretz Israel to Babel, okay, so Kiyata Ravdimi, right? He comes and he says, Amri b'marav, they said in Eretz Israel, Rabbi Min, av achal takhla v'shada shikhla levarai. He says, no, he used to eat the flesh, the good stuff inside, and he used to throw out the garini. So you imagine he used to come, he used to, come, he, used to he used to take the good stuff and all the bad, he used to throw it away. So Rav Shlava Rav comes and he says, "My dear, he wasn't in the pasuk. El Ginat Egoz Yerati Liro Bei Beanachal. Lama Nim Shurut Tamid Chachamim Leegoz. Why is it that Tamid Chachamim are compared to walnut? Well, I'm going to teach you my Egoz Zeh. Just like this walnut, obviously, Chluch Betit Tzutzal. Even even though it got all dirty on the outside with teeth and so on and everything, Emash Vodok, but the inside is still clean. You just crack the shell, you take out the inside, and it's still good. So to Tamid Chachamim, Misha Sadach, and to Ratoni Mesed. Even though he went off the path." His Torah does not become disgusting because at the end of the day, he still has the Bifrim, which is good. So even though on the outside he became a Sarach, you could still save the inside. So Ashkechel, Rabbi Barshila, Liyahu. And once happened, the Rabbi Barshila found the Liyahu Navi. Amale, he says, Mike, what is the Kosh Baruch doing? Amale, he says, Kamash Manu Bumma Dekulu Rabbanan. Right? He's coming and he's saying the, the Shmat, he's saying the Shemuot, right? In the names of all the rabbis. But he's not saying in the name of Rabbi Mir. Amale, he says, Am I why? He says, He was learning from Achel. I mean, the fact that Rabbi Meir learned from Achen, HaKadosh Baruch Hu does not say it in his name. Amale, he says, Amai. He says, Rabbi Meir, Rimon Matzah, Tocho Achat, he says, why? He says, that's what he did. He took a Rimon, he threw out the Klippa, and he took out the inside. Amale, he says, Hashta Kama. Right, now that he's saying, Meir Beni Omer, Izman Shadam Mitztaer, Shechina Malashon Omer. He says, and since because of the Paranut, which is coming on a person's sins, right, with what, what is the Shechina saying because of the Tzah? Kalani Minoshi, Kalani Mizroi. Right, it's, he's very heavy. His head is very heavy, and his arm is very, very heavy because he was punished. So if so, Hakadosh Baruch Hu is mitzameh mitzayer al daman shel shayim kal vachomer al daman shel tzadikim shnishbach. If Hakadosh Baruch Hu is going to be mitzayer even on the blood of the reshayim that they're going to be punished, and therefore their blood is being spilled because of their punishment, kal vachomer is going to be mitzayer on the daman shel tzadikim. Right, that is going to be uh, also poured. So therefore, at the end, he did actually bring down the name of uh, Rabbi Meir. And by the way, it actually says. I don't remember if it, it says here or it says somewhere else that the fact that he actually said this, that's why Hakadosh Baruch Hu immediately went and he said his name. Meaning at the beginning, Hakadosh Baruch Hu was not going to mention the name of Rabbi Meir. But once Rabbi Barshila came and he told Eliyahu Navi, but why? Rabbi Meir did something good and he justified Rabbi Meir. Now immediately Hakadosh Baruch Hu, ah, Hakadosh Baruch Hu comes and he said, he just mentioned now Rabbi Meir and this is what he said. Okay? Ashkeche Shemuel Rabbi Yehuda. So once happened that Shemuel found Rabbi Yehuda. That he was right now, he was on leaning on the door, on the door stopper, like on the door lock. Okay. Because he had a briach on the delet. He had like it was a piece of wood that he used to go from one side to another, he used to stop the door. And what happened was is that and he was crying. 
So Amalei comes and he says, "Shin in a sharp one." My Kabi, why are you crying? Amalei he says, "Mizutra mo my dichi beuber abanan." Is it so small that which is written on the rabbis? Ayes sofer, ayes shokel, ayes sofer in the migdalim. Where's the sofer? Where's the shokel? Right? These are like kinuim for tamidech hachamim, which are very, very great tamidech hachamim. And the pasuk is saying on their Torah that it was lost when they when they went off the path. Ayes sofer, shayu sofrim kol yeshuvat turot. Where is the sofrim? Because they used to count every single letter of the Torah. The, the sofrim are always tamidech hachamim because they count every letter of the Torah. Ayes shokel, where's the shokel? Shu shokrim kalim chamim in Torah. They used to weigh even the kalot. The mitzot kalot, they used to make them like hamurot in the Torah, right? Or it says over here, because they used to know the kalvachomer. So that was the concept of learning the Torah and the derech of kalvachomer. They used to come and they used to teach 300 halachot in different things of Tumah v'tara in Migdala Poreach ba'avir. Okay, that's a whole, there's three pirushim over here. So that's all, lamed, this, or that, okay, fine. Now he comes and he says, he says, he says, he says, he says, they asked 300 uh, questions. Doeg asked We learned in the Mishnah, There are three kings and four hediotot that they don't have. Now, who are those four hediotot? Achitofen. So if you see that you have people like Doeg and Achitofen, that they were so such chachamim and everything, and still they lost their olam haba, so what's going to be with us? Meaning you could have such great tamidei chachamim and such great people, and still they lose everything, right? So now you're going to tell me now, so what's going to be with us? Amale, he says, Shinina, Tina Belibam. He says it was already from the beginning of their of their their, their days, it was already even a Hirura Vera at the beginning. Right? What does that mean? That means you see that the beginning, there was a core which was rotten. And if the beginning there's a core which is rotten, the man, there's nothing what to do. Where do you see that? Acher Mai. Where do you see by Acher? Right, they said that even before he was mitkalkel, he used to listen to Zemed Yivani, which means he used to listen to the songs, right, of the Yivani. Right. Now, obviously, all the, the non-Jewish songs, right, why is it prohibited? Here, they said it's because of Avelut al but it's all these poetry, other things. Or also, they had different books. So it was either because of the books of the Sipreminim or because of the Zemed, right, the songs, but they both brought him off the path, okay? Now, they says the Gimara. So that means you see that even before he went off the path, there was already something already there. There was the Varim Bego, as they say. There was already something planted. You know, there were seeds that were already being planted, which caused him to go off. Sha'al Nimosa Gardi. So once happened that Nimosa Gardi asked, right? He says over here, um, Rabbi Meen, this, this was a, a, philo- a philosopher, right? He was a very important philosopher, right? Nimosa Gardi. It says over here, Kol Amar Dinachit Liora Salik. He says, any tzemer, any wool that goes down into a big pot when you're going to uh, to paint it, when you're going to, try, going to try to dye it, okay? He says, what? All the, the lomnim that are in front of the chachamim, does it actually protect them from sin? Right? Sometimes you have a achen, that is Torah, they're not protected. Amalei, he says, kol man dahava naki agavi mesalik. He says, any tzemer, which is not dirty, right, which is naki, so therefore he says, it comes up with the proper, with the proper dye. Meaning when you take a, a tzemet and it's very pure, it's very naki, you put it down, you pick it up, it's going to get the dye. If it's dirty, called the law of inaki, so then it's not going to come up, with, which means that it's not going to protect it. The Torah will not protect it from the different type of sins. So, okay, and that will finish with acher. So basically we finished with acher. There was another gimana to do with acher, if you remember, to do with the beginning of acher, when he saw Yonatan and Uziel, right, that uh, all the Torah, Everything was burning the off Bavid, right? The yeah. Bavid. So therefore he said, ah, so you know what? I want my son to become a Tamir Chacham. I want my son to become a rabbi because therefore he is that already the beginning was crooked. Because he should have said he wanted it for Kalash Baruch not because there's going to be fire coming out or burning birds or doing all these things that he saw the power of what it was, the Torah. So uh, obviously yeah, the father of Achir said that. There was that the Brimi Lav Achir. Right, so he says that. Rekiva Allah be shalom, Yerabe shalom. Rekiva, he went up and he went, came down in peace. Allah be kedubu men on him. Says Moshchini acherecha, Narudu tzad aviani amelech adarav. What does that mean? The Kadosh Baruch Hu he brought him into the sheva echalot shel mala, and also Rekiva bikshu malachi asher leluchlo. Even Rekiva, they wanted to push him out. Right, but they were saying, what's going on? Amal le Kadosh Baruch Hu. Kadosh Baruch Hu says, Zenichul as a kenzel. Let this again. Shalui lishamesh bichudod bichudi because he is fitting to be mishtamesh with my kavod. And then we are going to see with the derashav Rekiva bezerat Hashem tonight.